If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and try to answer the question on your own before listening on. What we'll do first is draw a picture that represents the situation being described. So here we have the quarterback throwing the football at an initial speed of 20 meters per second at an angle of 30 degrees above the horizontal. And then in purple, we have the receiver. Now there's two possibilities here. If the ball, which is thrown by the quarterback, falls short of 20 meters, perhaps right here, then the receiver is going to have to run this way. On the other hand, if the ball is thrown beyond 20 meters, then the receiver has to run in the opposite direction. So those are the two possible options, and our goal is to figure out which of those two options is at play here. So in essence, our goal is to determine how far horizontally the ball is thrown. Again, that's going to tell us in which direction the receiver should travel. And it turns out that in order to determine how far horizontally the ball is thrown, we actually need to find the time of flight first. And in order to find the time of flight of the ball, we're going to consider the information in the y direction. And so we've arranged a sort of table here to keep ourselves organized. In the table, we have the initial velocity, but remember, we're looking at the y direction. So let's come back over to this picture and consider what the initial velocity of the football is in the y direction. And perhaps to get a better look at that, we can zoom in on this picture. So here we've zoomed in and shown the initial velocity at 20 meters per second at that 30 degree angle. What we want to do is draw the x and the y components of this initial velocity. Now the x component is going to extend in the rightward direction, and so we can draw that in. And then the y component is going to extend straight up. Remember, it's the y component whose velocity we are interested in finding. And we can see that this y component is opposite of the 30 degree angle. And because it's opposite of the 30 degree angle, we would use the sine. Therefore, the initial velocity becomes 20 times the sine of 30 degrees. Note that that initial velocity in the y direction is pointing up, and therefore the initial velocity should be positive. Now, in the y direction, the acceleration is negative 9.8 meters per second squared because of gravity. Now, let's also consider the displacement in the y direction. Remember that as the football moves up and then travels back down to its original height, the displacement in the y direction is actually going to be 0 meters. And so we can actually fill in zero meters for that displacement in the y direction. Again, that's because the ball is returning back to the same height at which it was thrown. In fact, the question mentions that right here, that the football is returning at the level at which it was thrown. That makes the vertical displacement or the y direction displacement equal to zero. Now we have this information filled in, we can easily calculate the time of flight using the following equation. So this is an equation that we have learned in this chapter. We will go ahead and fill in the known values. Again, the displacement is equal to zero. The initial velocity is 20 times the sine of 30. If you punch that into your calculator, making sure that your calculator is in degree mode, you would see that this is actually equal to 10 meters per second. So we can actually fill 10 in for the initial velocity in the y direction. We then multiply that by the time. And then we have plus 1 half times the acceleration of negative 9.8 times time squared. We can again pick up our calculators and multiply 1 half by negative 9.8 to make negative 4.9. And we want to solve this equation for the time t. And one way of doing that is to factor t. And so that would leave us with 10 minus 4.9 t. And then what we'll do is set this factor equal to 0. We don't need to set this factor equal to 0 because that would lead to a result of time equaling 0. But we don't want that. We want the time that it takes for the ball to travel its horizontal distance to where the receiver is going to be. So we'll set the factor of 10 minus 4.9t equal to 0. We can subtract 10 over to the other side, and then we'll end up dividing both sides by negative 4.9. And when we do that, we get a time of approximately 2.04 seconds. So this is how long the ball is in the air. Now remember, we were trying originally to find the horizontal displacement that the ball is going to travel. So in essence, we're looking for delta x in the x direction. So we're going to turn back to the table, but this time we're going to be filling in information in the x direction. So here we have the table, and notice that we have filled in the time that we just calculated of 2.04 seconds. What we want to do is first get the initial velocity in the x direction. So we can return back to the drawing that we had made 
and look for this x component of the initial velocity, notice that the x component is adjacent to the 30 degree angle. And because it's adjacent, we're going to use the cosine function. So we would end up with 20 meters per second times the cosine of the 30 degree angle. Also note that the x component is pointing in the positive x direction, so we should make this initial velocity positive. Now the acceleration in the x direction is zero meters per second squared, not the negative 9.8, which acts only in the y direction. And so with that information filled in, we can turn to the following equation that again we've learned in this chapter. And this time we're using the x direction information. And what's nice is that because the acceleration in the x direction is equal to zero, this entire term is gonna drop out. And so when we take out that term, we can just simply plug in the initial velocity of 20 cosine of 30 and multiply that by the time of 2.04 seconds. And when we do that, we get about 35.3 meters. So going back to this rather cluttered picture, in fact, why don't we clean it up first? In the horizontal direction, the ball is going to travel 35.3 meters. So if we were to draw it, it might look something like this. Notice it's gonna go past where the receiver is standing. So it's gonna end up somewhere over here. Therefore, the receiver is going to have to run to the right in order to catch the ball. And in this picture, to the right simply means that the receiver is running away from the quarterback. And so the answer to part A, when it asks in what direction should the receiver run, it should be away from the quarterback. So that's the correct answer to part A. You could also note that as being in the direction that the ball was thrown. That's simply another way of noting the correct answer to part A. So now that part A is solved, we can move on to part B. And to understand that, what we'll do is draw a line from the quarterback to where the ball is eventually going to land. And remember, we have found the distance of that line to be roughly 35.3 meters. So that would be from the quarterback here to this position here. Notice that the receiver would have to run this distance right here in order to catch the ball. Now that distance is easily obtained by taking the 35.3 meters and subtracting 20 meters. And of course, if we subtract that, we're going to get about 15.3 meters. So that's going to be the displacement in the x direction of the receiver, 15.3 meters. Furthermore, part B mentions that the receiver is moving with a constant speed. That means the acceleration is going to be zero. And what we wanna do is figure out the initial velocity of the receiver. And before we calculate that, let's remember too that the time was determined earlier to be about 2.04 seconds. That was the time that the ball takes to reach the point at which the receiver will catch it. So we're gonna use that same time. We can turn back to the following equation that we've already used in this problem. And we're once again going to note that the acceleration is zero. So we can actually eliminate this term right here. We'll go ahead and plug in the displacement of 15.3 and the time of 2.04 seconds. We'll divide both sides by 2.04. And when we do that, we can see that the initial velocity in the x direction of the receiver is roughly 7.5 meters per second. So this would be the correct answer to part B. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, please click the thumbs up and subscribe so you can stay tuned for additional videos. Remember that you can send in your own question to the email address on the screen, and I'll do my best to post the answer to it on YouTube.